Actions are an amazing part of Photoshop, but if you build them wrong, they can be a right pain. Today I'm going to show you what they are and let you know exactly how to build them properly. My name is Max Bridge, you can find me on squaremountain.co.uk and on Instagram at square underscore mountain. I use actions all the time and I'm not talking about some poorly designed action pack which only serves as a crutch to your lack of Photoshop knowledge. I mean custom created actions which you can use to speed up your workflow in Photoshop and to improve your skills as a retoucher. Now when creating actions there's a few things you need to do to ensure that they work every single time. That's what we're going to be covering today. If you've not already got the actions panel open, you need to go to window and then actions. This is the normal kind of operating mode, which will list all of your folders. I always have them organized into folders to make it easier. Uh, you can create and record actions here. You can delete steps. There's also button mode. Uh, this is what I use when I'm actually running the actions because it stops you having to hit the play button. It's a lot quicker. So usually when you want to run an action, you have to hit, you select the action and you have to hit play. Uh, and I know it sounds like a small thing, but I much prefer having it like that. And it also color codes everything, which just makes it all look a little bit nicer. You can kind of group things into particular areas. So I'll have ones that deal with color, ones that deal with luminosity, uh, ones I've got just for still life photography. Um, it makes it a little bit easier and nicer to kind of look around. So now we're gonna create an action the wrong way so that you can see why it doesn't work uh, and exactly what we need to do to make it work. So let's create a dodge and burn action. Now we click this button down here and we can name our action set. We'll name it DB. You can select a function key if you want for that action. I never really use that. Uh, and you can also decide the set that it goes into. We're going into example actions here. And we can color it, we're gonna color it red. That color refers to the color it will be in button mode. Uh, so if I just stop the recording for a moment, you'll see if I go into button mode, that our new action is red, okay? So let's go back out of button mode and we'll start recording again. So I'm gonna do this the wrong way, like I said, create two curves layers, name one D for dodge and lift up the curve and name the other one B for burn and drag that down. Then we'll select the mask, hit Control or Command I to invert them. Shift click on the top layer, hit Control or Command G to group them and name it dodge and burn. And then we'll right click on it and color that in red. So there we go, it recorded every single step that we made. If I hit stop, that's our recording done and that is our action created. So if I delete this, I'll run the action and you'll see that it works. There we go, it created it. But what happens if I run it again? No, and I run it again. No, it's not working properly. And why is it not working properly? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna delete all of these steps. You can delete multiple ones, or you can delete one step just by hitting the delete button at the bottom. But we'll delete all of them, and we will start to record again. So if I hit record, and I create three curves layers, one, two, three, you see it creates all the layers there. If I select a curve layer by clicking in here, it records that. You see it recorded select layer two. If I click layer three, it records select layer three. Problem with that is that if you have multiple layers within your document and you have say multiple curves layer two or multiple curves layer three, then Photoshop doesn't know which one to select and then your action doesn't work properly. Now to get around this, what we need to do is know how to navigate the layers panel without clicking on it. And there's three things you need to know to do that. So if I hold control or command and we use the square brackets key, if I use the open square brackets key, it will select the backward layer, you see? Oh, sorry, it will move the backward layer. Control or command moves the layer. Uh, if you select, the, if you hit control or command and this open square brackets key, it moves it down or the closed square brackets key, it moves it up. If you hit control, if you hit alt or option, God, I'm getting my words wrong today. If you hit Alt or Option uh, and then use the same keys, the square bracket keys, uh, the open bracket key will move it down, you see, and the closed bracket key will move it up. And you see how it records all here? Select forward layer, select backward layer, move current layer. Now, if you need to select more than one layer, then you hit Alt or Option and Shift. And then again, use those keys. If you use the open bracket key, it will select the layer below and the closed bracket key, you'll select the layer above. Okay, so if we stop that and delete all of these, I will show you how to create the action correctly. So we hit record again. And now the next thing we need to know is that you wanna use the menu items 
always. Rather than doing anything over here, it's much better to do it from here. And the reason for that is that you can do things like naming. So if we go layer, new, new adjustment layer, and then go to curves, we can name it from here. So rather than having to click on it, we just name it now. So if I name it D for dodge, you can also select blend mode. So again, rather than having to click on it, you do that right there and change the color to red. There we go. And then I do it again, or oh, actually no, we'll lift it up first and invert our layer. Now, as you can see, it didn't register that I clicked on there. It just registered that I made a new layer and then I made adjustments to that layer. Nothing specific. It's all just about having made a layer and adjusted that one rather than you've created a specific curves to layer and then adjusted that. Okay, so let's create our next one, layer, new adjustment layer and curves, and we'll call it B for burn, and we'll color it red. And then we will drag that down and hit Control or Command I to invert it. Now we need to select both of them. So if you remember, it was Alt or Option and Shift, and then open brackets, and then that selects the backward layer. So you see, select backward layer. And now we wanna group these. Again, we could hit just Control or Command G to group it, but we want to do it from up here. We go layer, new, group from layers, and then we're able to name it. So I name it DB and I color it red. And there we go, that's it. That is our action created. If I delete that and I run this again and again, it will work every single time. No matter how many layers you have in between it, it doesn't matter, it will always work. Now, if you want to edit this, so let's say you run it again, and we decide that we want to add something into this. So we want to add a hue and saturation layer for some reason. If you look through all of these, you can kind of see what's going on as you're, as you're working through all the steps that you've made. All we want to stop and add to is here. Okay, we want to add a hue and saturation layer here. So we don't want the select backward layer and we don't want the make group. If you untick these, it will stop those parts of the action running. So if I hit play, it doesn't run those two. Now you don't have to do this. I just find it easier when you're when you're working on actions, when you're creating them. I find it easier to do it like this. You can actually just create a step. So for instance, if I just created a hue and saturation layer, chuck up a saturation, invert it, doesn't really matter. Hit stop. You can actually just select all of those and drag them to the correct area. Now that, that works fine. Uh, you can do that or you can do it in the way that I was just saying. Uh, where if I, if I delete those, mm -mm, delete that, delete it all, you deselect the parts you don't want and then run it. It just lets you know, okay, this is exactly where I want to do it. This is the point that I want to make the adjustment and I know it is. So then you select the area that you want to make the adjustment from and then we create our new layer. So I hit record again, create a hue and saturation layer for no real reason, oversaturate it and then invert it and you see it's done that. Now if I hit stop, there we go, it's created those after the point that I wanted it to. If I delete those, run the action again, there we go. We see it's all done that. And what you might have noticed if you were watching closely is that I created that incorrectly. Yeah, that was, that was definitely a test. Definitely, definitely a test. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, so <laughs> if we run that and then I go back here, hit record and go layer, new adjustment layer, hue and saturation, doesn't matter what we're naming, it doesn't matter for this bit. Uh, color it red and there we go, oversaturate it, invert it, hit stop and there we go, we have those selected. And now what we wanna do is we still want the group layer, so that can still be active, but we need to do the select backward part again. So if I hit record, Alt or Option and Shift, and then the open bracket key, select both of those. I can hit Stop. I can delete this bit if I want, because we don't need it. I can turn that back on, and that has our action edited and created. So if I play it again, it'll run through, and we have the extra layer in there. Now, this is a really simple action. I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you an easy way of creating things, but you can create actions for absolutely anything almost you know i have ones that do frequency separation so if i click on that it has things called stops where it tells you a little guide i'll show you how to do that in a second um, it has filters that it adds it goes to apply image and does everything another stop layer with more explanation it does everything right there 
all in that action. That's a really, really complicated action. Uh, and then there are loads of other ones you can do. Anything you can do in Photoshop, you can create an action for. Now, I told you I was going to show you about those stops. So let me just go back to our editing mode and I'll just show you here. So if you click on this little icon here, you can go to, you have these little bits here. You can insert menu item. So if you wanted to, you can see it says uh, none selected. If you wanted to insert an item from the menu, you can do anything. So if we went, I don't know, filter and camera raw filter, see it says that, and then it will record that and add that into your action. But we don't want to do that right now. So if we do another one, we can do a stop. So if we hit that, this was when I had the message. So if we add a message of hello, uh, and we click allow, continue, click OK, then you see it adds the stop just into there. Now, if we play this action again, at that point, it has our little message. So just like you saw in the frequency separation action where I had a really complicated message that actually explained what you're supposed to do in the next steps, you can, you can add anything. Uh, and the same, these are really cool, you can do conditional. So you can say if the current document is landscape or square or all these other little things, then do this, or if not, do that. It's really, really powerful and really great. It can make a huge difference to your retouching in Photoshop. Like I said, I've been doing this for, for years and over the years I've created a ton of actions which help me do loads of things. The Actions panel can be an extremely powerful tool when they're created correctly. One of the biggest benefits is that when you're learning Photoshop, you can use it as a way to store everything you've learned. As you learn a new technique, you create an action for it. By doing so, the Actions panel becomes like your own personal Photoshop memory. As you develop as a retoucher, you add more things in and you take things out, you refine it, and eventually it will become an indispensable tool for you just like mine is. But remember, you've got to create them properly, otherwise it will just become a massive headache. Uh, now, if you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, chuck them in the comments below. All right. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.